I'm Jill, and I enjoy English paper piecing with hexagons. There are many different ways to do English paper piecing, and I'm going to show you the way that I do it, and hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tips and tricks that'll work for you, too. Here are some tools that you might like to use when you do your English paper piecing. I like to use the pre-cut pieces from paper pieces. They're perfectly cut and you don't have to worry about cutting them yourself. I'd much rather sew than I would cut my pieces out. We're going to be using 3 8 inch hexagons today. You're also going to need a nice needle. I like to use the Tulip brand size 9 embroidery needle. You're also going to need another needle that isn't maybe so nice and special because it's going to do your basting and it's going to get dull as you go through the cardboard. So whatever needle that you have around will work fine for that. You'll also be using um, whatever thread that you have around for the basting. You might as well use up that bobbin that you don't know why you had that color. You're going to want to use a really good thread for your piecing, however, um, along with the good needle. The last thing that I like to use are the thimble pads. They peel off of the paper and you can stick them on your finger wherever it works best for you. They stick again so you can use them over and over again. They even work great for binding or other hand things that you're doing that seem to give you um, a hard time with the needle. One of the things that I really like about English paper piecing is you don't have to do a lot of prep work before you go. So if you're going to go someplace, you can just grab a piece of fabric and you're ready to go. You don't have to cut strips ahead of time. What I do is I make sure that my strip that I cut is more than a quarter of an inch bigger than my piece. A lot of directions will tell you to trim it to a quarter of an inch, but if you do that, you kind of lose some seam allowance if it scoots on you. Once I get my square cut, I'm just going to cut the corners off. And on this size piece, that just reduces the bulk a little bit and makes it easier to manage later. I'm now going to fold a side over and with my basting thread and needle I'm going to go through the cardboard and everything having the knot on the pretty side. I then continue around just folding a side over, making a stitch through everything, fold a side over, make a stitch. This is just basting and it will come out later to allow me to get that cardboard out of there. And since I'm going to remove it, I don't really want to have a knot that I have to pick out later. So this very last side that's a little chunkier, I'm going to put two stitches in. So there's my first one, and now my second one is going to go all the way across. This allows me to just cut the thread and leave a tail without having to make another knot that I'm going to take out later. Now to join them together, again a lot of directions tell you to put right sides together and whip stitch them. A couple things happen then, a lot of times you catch the cardboard, and more importantly, your thread sometimes shows on the front when you open them up. So instead, I like to stitch mine side by side. I find it easier if I take those two chunky sides and put them side by side to start with. I'm going to slide my knot and my thread underneath the fold so that it's hidden. Then I'm just going to catch a little bit of the fabric on both pieces and make a loop knot. Now I'm going to continue down the sides catching just a little bit of fabric on both pieces. Again this allows you to stitch from the back so your thread stays on the back so you can even use contrasting thread to see where you've stitched and it's not going to show on the front. If it gets a little hard to hold that direction, you can turn it around and work your way back the other way. I continue all the way on this side until I get to the end. Every time I get to an end or an intersection, I like to make another knot. Two reasons. One, if my knot thread breaks somewhere along the way, I know I've always got a knot back at that intersection. Plus it's a little bit of a stress point, so I want to be sure it's strong enough. To add my next piece, I'm just going to slide my needle through that fold and have it come out the corner. I can then add my next piece on, again putting the chunkier side to the side I'm working on will make it a little easier because I can catch more fabric to get started. Again, I'm going to make another knot here and then I can continue down to the other side. Since I've slid it out to the corner, 
this is going to allow me to do all both of these sides at the same time without having to turn it funny to lay them right sides together. I've stitched a flower together and as you can see on the back I've used that contrasting thread that I talked about so I could see where I've stitched but none of it shows on the front. Now we don't want all the cardboard to stay in there all the time. For one thing we can use it over again so we want to take it out and for another it makes it just easier to handle as we get more pieces added. So what I'm going to do is cut the knot off of the basting thread and then I'm just going to take my scissors to catch that thread and pull it out. This is really helpful to have a contrasting thread here too so that you can see to take it out. Then when I turn it over to the back, since the basting is out, all I have to do is reach in, grab the piece out, and lay the pieces down. No pressing needed, no, no other preparation after that. So you must wait for the pieces to be surrounded by others before you take it out. Um, otherwise you don't have the shape that you need to continue to add pieces on. So as you continue to get pieces added around and around, you can keep taking those cardboard pieces out so that it makes it easier to work with. Hopefully you've learned some tips and tricks that will make your English paper piecing more enjoyable. Of course, if you have any questions about anything that I showed you, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you.